Hello, my name is Joshua Alger. In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to model the human head in Blender. Although, if you're familiar with another 3D software, such as Maya, 3ds Max, Lightwave, or another 3D program, you should be able to follow along in that software if you're very familiar with it. This tutorial is for intermediate users. If you're a beginner, you should find some beginner training materials to go through first to teach yourself the basics. The photo references used in this tutorial are part of this photo reference pack. Depending on where you're watching this video, you should be able to buy this photo reference pack by following the link beneath the video or by using the buy button beneath the video. Something really cool that's included with this photo reference pack is a pre-made texture for texturing your head. Also included is a reference poster showing the main modeling steps used within this video. And let's get started! A head model with good topology, has loops flowing around the eyes, and it has loops flowing around the mouth. Alright, let's get modeling. Make sure that the 3D cursor location values are set to zero. Then add a plane. Rotate the plane 90 degrees around the x-axis. Then align the plane with the front of the face. Add a mirror modifier and turn on clipping. In edit mode, position the plane over one eye. Then we're going to add a loop cut a little bit in from each side of the plane. After you have added the four loop cuts in their proper places, select the top three corner verts and merge them at center. Then do the same thing with the bottom three corner verts. Select the entire bottom edge of what we have so far and extrude it downwards. Then line up the verts to fit the reference. Select the outside edge and move it back so that it lines up with the side reference image. Now select these two verts and move them back so that the edges are going around the eye. Select the lower portion of geometry and extrude it inwards. Then take the verts and line them up with the outside edge of the mouth. After you have lined it up in front view, we're going to go into side view and line it up in side view as well. Delete the faces over the mouth and select the loop around the mouth and extrude it inwards. Line the new verts up with the inside edge of the mouth. Now we're going to add a loop cut below the nose nostril and above the nose nostril. We're now going to tweak the vert so that it makes nice curved loops flowing around the mouth. Make sure that you align the new verts in both views. The loops that we added gave us more verts so that we could make it follow the chin more closely. And there's still two verts right over here, still out of alignment, so I'm just going to line those up. We're now going to add a loop cut right beside the nose nostril going across the eye. Then add a loop cut going horizontally across the eye and delete the center vert. We're now going to take the verts around the outside edge of the eye and line them up so that they make a nice curved loop instead of having this blocky square shape over the eye. A head model with good topology always has loops flowing around the eyes and around the mouth. After getting the verts around the eye lined up about how I did, select the loop around the eye and extrude it inwards. Then we're going to tweak the verts so that they line up with both reference images. After tweaking the verts around the eye, we're going to extrude the verts around the eye in one more time.
Take the new verts and line them up with the inside edge of the eye. They should be going along the edge of the closed eyelid. Alright, that looks good enough, so we're now going to proceed by making the nose. Select the faces over the tip of the nose, and we're going to go into side view and extrude them outwards. Take the verts and line them up with the reference, then select the verts above the extrusion we made, and line them up with the bridge of the nose. We're now going to tweak the verts in front view. Every time you make an extrusion, you should line up the verts with the reference image before going on and adding further extrusions and more loop cuts to that area. We're now going to create the nose nostril. To do that, select the face over the nostril, go into side view, and extrude it upwards. Now I'm going to scale it in to make the nostril taper as it goes upwards. Add a loop cut going around the mouth across the tip of the nose. We're now going to add a loop cut going around the tip of the nose. This will give us more verts on the nose so that we can make it more rounded instead of having such flat nostrils as you can see that it has. Just take the verts and align them with the reference image so that they fit the shape of the nose. We already have the basics of the face created with very good topology. I'm now going to add a loop cut on the cheek, and I'm also going to add a loop cut along the jawbone. Then tweak the verts that we have so far. Let's get this one a little bit better lined up with the chin. Also, the nose could stand to be a bit more rounded on the tip, so I'm going to scoot that vert out a bit, tweak a couple other verts. Now we're going to create the rest of the head. Select the verts around the jaw and cheek and extrude them back. Then select the corner vert from the eye and merge it with the corner vert of the extrusion we made. I'm now going to tweak a couple verts and make sure that the verts along the forehead are evenly spaced. Now we're going to select the verts from the top half of the face going past the corner of the eye and extrude them up along the forehead. Now take the verts and align them into a pretty much straight line. Select the entire edge of verts and extrude it back. Continue extruding all the way around the head. Just rotate and move the verts to align them with the reference image. We're now going to connect this extrusion we made with the front of the head by filling these four verts with a face. Select the verts at the base of the back of the head and extrude them downwards. Then line up the verts so that the edges are going pretty much straight up and down. Select the front of the chin and extrude it downwards. Then fill these four verts with a face. Select the loop at the base of the neck and extrude it down. Now scale it to fit the neck. The neck's a bit too wide, so in proportional edit mode, tweak the verts so that they fit the reference. Using proportional edit mode makes it very easy to move a large number of verts at the same time. The side of the head is a bit flat, so I just selected one vert on the side of the head, and I'm moving it out in proportional edit mode. 
the head is pretty much done. Selecting the head, I'm going to change the shading to smooth. That can help us to visualize what the head will look like at a higher poly. There's a couple verts on the neck that are creating a jagged line, so I'm going to smooth those out so that it makes a smooth curve. This will give us a much nicer looking mesh. Pretty much all that is left is moving the verts that are out of place so that they line up with the reference image. Also, I'm going to be adding a subsurf modifier that will give us a higher poly mesh. Clicking the triangle button with the verts on the corners will cause the edges to curve with the subsurfed mesh. To add definition to the mouth, add a loop cut very close to the other loop that is flowing along the tight bend in the upper lip. Then simply take the new verts and line them up with the reference image. Having the verts close together along the tight bend on the upper lip allows us to replicate that tight bend in our 3D model. A couple of the verts that looked lined up before we added the subsurf modifier need a bit of tweaking, so I'm just going to go around and make sure that they all line up now. For the most part, they do. The cheek looks a bit flat, so I'm going to add a loop cut and move the verts out a bit so that we have a cheekbone, which was pretty much non-existent. Also, I'm going to move out these couple verts on the cheek. The cheeks are looking a bit sunken in. The nose is looking a bit fat, so I'm going to move a couple verts in closer to the nose. That will just give the bridge of the nose a little bit tighter bent. Also tweaking this vert by the corner of the eye a little bit. Okay, so our model is looking pretty good. It's looking much like a human head. And so now I'm just going to apply the mirror modifier that will allow us to add unsymmetrical details to our mesh. Applying the subsurf modifier will give us a higher poly mesh. That way we will have more vertices to add finer details to our model. Pressing option B and selecting part of the mesh will restrict the 3D viewport's viewing area so that it will only display that portion of the mesh. It will now be a lot easier to tweak the vertices on the mesh because the verts from the back of the head will not be obstructing our view. It's not that big of a deal while the mesh is still a very low poly, but after applying the subsurf modifier, we got a whole lot more vertices, so it would be pretty hard tweaking the front of the mesh with all those verts on the back getting in the way of us working. To clear the restricted view, press option B on your keyboard. Okay, so it looks like this tutorial has come to an end. I skipped ahead a little bit to save you the time and bore of watching me tweak verts over and over again and add more loop cuts. To get the head the way it is now, I simply added more loop cuts and tweaked some verts literally over and over and over again until I thought they looked right. We now have a pretty good looking head model. I hope that you have enjoyed yourself, and thank you very much for watching.